Aloha, my name is Jonathan Barlow Key, and this is my invention, the Atlantean Calendar. In this video, I'll describe the keys to reading and understanding it. From Aleister Crowley's Lieber Hanuk, the four elemental watchtowers of John D. Letters are arranged according to the later Raphaelite vision and translated from the Enochian. Sub-elemental, zodiacal, planetary, and sephirotic attributions are essentially identical to the Golden Dawn. This forms the substructure for the Atlantean calendar design. To begin our examination of the Atlantean calendar keys, we examine the Calvary cross arrangement. First, we see here in blue the ruler glyph, always located at the head or uppermost vertical position of the Calvary crosses, is the ruling planet of the sign or caput or cauda draconis. Next, we see in green the planetary glyph, one of the seven known planets of antiquity, arranged relative to the alternating solar and lunar eclipse positions per eon. In red, we find the cardinal sign, which is the cardinal or cherubic zodiacal sign from the top position below the left arm of the Calvary cross. Finally, in orange, we will examine the alchemical glyphs, those being circular salt, pointed sulfur, and D's mercury, which rotate from one point to the next counterclockwise. There are two labels for the Calvary crosses. The first is the diagonal vector, which shows the orientation from one zodiacal sign or Mayan day name to the next in sequence. The other is perihelion or aphelion, position of Earth relative to Sun in orbit. Our next key in examining the Atlantean calendar is the key of the deacon crosses. There are three labels for each deacon cross square. The first is the attribution of sign, and these pertain to whether the sign is movable, fixed, or common, as relates to the attraction of each sign to its throne, or a certain pure element assigned to it, in accordance with the counter-rotation of the movable and common signs around and about the fixed signs by recombinations of the fourth order in the compositions of their relative elements. The second label of the deacon crosses is the attribution of the deacon. These pertain to whether the particular deacon is ascendant, cadent, or secedent, based on the first, second, or third ten degrees of each thirty degree sign it occupies. Lastly, in the primary or third position of the deacon cross squares, we find the hieroglyphic deacon itself. These are the hieroglyphic representations of the deacons according to the solar Egyptian civil calendar, as per each representing one-third of one sign, or ten degrees each of the ecliptic. To understand the pattern of the deacon crosses, we must look at the entire Atlantean calendar substructure. And here we see that the deacons form a pattern that can be graphed as a Gordian knot in each quadrant of the overall Atlantean calendar substructure. The next key we will examine is the key to the sub-angles of each quadrant of the Atlantean calendar. Here we see each square of the sub-angles of the four quadrants of the Atlantean calendar are governed each by five attributes. The fifth of these attributes are the elemental tattvas, the eastern equivalent to the four basic elemental forces. Acacia is not depicted. The fourth attribute are the elemental permutations. Each quadrant of the watchtowers represents a different permutation of the base four elements. 
through recombinations of the fourth and fifth attributes labeled for each sub-angle square, we arrive at the first labeled attribute, or the integrated reformed vector system. Thus, in the upper left of every sub-angle square, we find either a trigram or zodiacal attribution. These are either one of the eight double base trigrams or a sign of the zodiac. The attribution listed is arrived at by a crossing of the characteristics represented in positions 4 and 5. Sub-angle attribute 2 is the hexagram according to the King Wen sequence. These are one of 64 hexagrams arranged, moving in an upward column and then counterclockwise around the outside quadrants in the sequence of the King Wen order of the I Ching hexagrams. And these attributes are listed in the upper right corner of each square of each sub-angle in each quadrant of the Atlantean calendar. The third and final sub-angle attribute to be addressed is central to each square of each sub-angle. It is the 20 Mayan day names of the Hab. These are arranged along the same sequential diagonal vector as the zodiacal signs of the first position and according to an order where a cardinal direction is assigned to each element in positions 4 and 5. However, to understand the Mayan month glyphs within the innermost sub-angles of the quadrants of the Atlantean calendar, we examine the fifth quadrant of the Atlantean calendar called the Table of Union. And here, for each square of the Table of Union, we find four attributes listed. The first, the elements, or element of element, along the left column are listed the pure elements in ascending order of occurrence by formation as forces in modern astrophysical cosmology. From each character of this column derives a row of lesser or combined elements. Of these, the trait to the left presents the applied characteristic to the base character trait to the right. It should be noted that the doubled or combined elements cross from lower right to upper left. In the second position, we find listed the numbers of ratio difference between the elements. These are to be read between each element and that given below it, or in the case of those on the lowest row with those on the uppermost row. These represent the degree and difference of certain qualifying categorical traits given by Aristotle as adjectives and given rank by Cornelius Agrippa. Refer to the note by SRMD, page 611, Regardes Golden Dawn. In the third position, we see the correspondent traits of the I Ching. These are given where applicable, the trigrams following an upward left diagonal concourse, and the hexagrams following a downward right diagonal concourse, so that they overlap and cross by one another. And finally, in the fourth position, we find the months of the Mayan Hab and the Yuyeb. There are 18 proper months in the Mayan Hab, or solar calendar, and these are given upward left diagonally in accordance with the pattern of the numbers of ratio difference between the elements. The interpolation of the Yuyeb in ratio 2 and 4 in the left column represent the interpolation between certain months of the five Zamakapa kin. This being the fifth tablet, it can also represent the addition to one of the two Yuyeb of a sixth Zamakapa kin as the equivalent of a leap year. Finally, Reading the calendar all the way around the outside and counting the interior months as seasons of each quadrant, as well as counting the table of union, we arrive at the method of reading the Atlantean calendar by attributing to each square of each sub-angle a 2,000 year long aeon. Thus, the total number of years that can be read by the complete system is 28,785,000 years.